Hey guys, this is the Natural Medic. Thanks so much for checking out my podcast. On this podcast, we like to get you out in the outdoors in a safe manner without breaking the bank and trying to enjoy and learn about new activities and how you can enjoy the outdoors in your own backyard even or your own area of wherever you're located. So I hope you will check me out and give my podcast a listen and try to create your own adventures outside. Thanks so much. Have a great one. Bye. Welcome to episode number two of the Natural Medic Adventures podcast. Today I'm actually hiking. It's Memorial Day weekend. I'm hiking at Dangerfield State Park, which is a park I used to work at, located about 30 minutes from my home. It's a beautiful day for hiking. The temperature is actually in the 60s, which is unusual for Texas on Memorial Day weekend. But... Uh, Looks like it's going to be a very nice day to get out and hike. Welcome, welcome to episode two of the podcast, The Natural Medics Adventures. I'm so glad that you are back and joining me on the second episode of this wonderful podcast. It's wonderful because, of course, I'm doing it. And, you know, I'm a little uh, proud of myself getting <laughs> doing this second episode now. Um, what we're going to do on this episode is talk about some more in-depth top topics that we kind of started on the path. See what I did there? The path. From last time, we're going to talk about those things and continue down the path and get you out on your very first hike. This episode, we're going to focus on day hikes primarily the way i look at it if you can do a day hike you can adapt that into an overnight hike if you can do an overnight hike you can do a weekend trip if you can do a weekend trip you can do a week long trip if you can do a week long trip you can do a month or more and so we're, we're trying to get you crawling before you can walk and get you started on that path, so to speak. I know we keep saying that, but um, anyway, um, since I've been with you last, I've been on two day hiking day hiking adventures myself. I went to two different state parks in my area. Both of them are about the same distance away from me. The first one was about two weeks ago. I went to Martin Creek Lake State Park, which is down by Tatum, Texas. It's halfway between Marshall and Henderson, Texas, up here in northeast Texas. We're kind of in the Tyler, Texarkana, Shreveport area. And uh, hiked every bit of trail at Martin Creek. I'm going to give more details about that a little bit later. And then this past weekend, I went to Dangerfield State Park, which is located... Um, due west of me, approximately 30 or so minutes, and did some hiking there. Did about the same length of hiking at both places, right around five miles for the day. The weather was great, actually, and not too terribly bad. What we're going to talk about, though, later in the podcast, this episode, we're going to talk about how to find trails. We're going to talk about some tools out there that will help you find different trails and they give accurate reviews and information about the background of the trail, what to expect, what's out there, you know, things to look out for, and so forth. We're also going to talk about gear this time. We're going to talk about the gear you should bring on every hike, whether it's a day hike, an overnight hike, or longer. We're going to talk about some footwear and socks and clothing. Probably a lot of this stuff you're probably going to have already, which is good. We're trying to keep this as low cost as we can. 
and we're going to talk about doing some more training for your body. And after that, we might throw in some other stuff for good measure. But we'll, that's kind of what we're looking at for this week's episode. So please join us as we continue the Natural Medics adventures. Thanks for being here. All right, all right. So let's talk about how to find trails in your neighborhood, region, state, location, wherever you are. There's three different apps I want to talk about. The first one is called All Trails. Now, All Trails is available if you're on your web browser at the house, alltrails.com, just like it sounds, A-L-L-T-R-A-I-L-S.com. I've been a member of All Trails pretty much since the beginning of it in the, I think it came out about 2010, and the cool thing about All Trails is they have two different levels. They have a free level. The free level is pretty, you know, pretty detailed. It has a lot of features. Um, it's right off the bat, if you go to the web page, it's also available as an app. All of these would be available as apps to download in the Play Store or in the App Store, uh, depending on your model of phone. And All Trails is, in my opinion, the most extensive of the three we're going to talk about today as far as finding trails in your area. The other ones have their benefits as well, but I think All Trails is great because you don't have to you don't have to pay anything. You can download the app for free, set up your account, and they're going to give you a lot of cool things. You can search by a city, a park, or a trail name. You can even explore nearby trails. If you're in the app, it'll find nearby trails to you. If you're in um, on the computer, it will find them the other way. Um, on the free end of things, you can actually do quite a lot. So let's talk about that right now. Okay. Um, the free level, you can create a favorite list. You can, like I said, look up pretty much anything out there. You have a bunch of different layers of maps to look at and all of that. And you can import activities. You can sort by, sort by activities, not just hiking. You can do uh, trail running. You can do uh, mountain biking. You can filter your results so that you'll know if your dog is, you know, allowed there. Your kids, if it's a good trail for kids. People do review these places, and they're able to. Um, you're able to read those reviews, and and um, pretty much how they show up in the search. So if you search for trails in your area, it's going to show up by the ones that have the highest reviews, and. That's handy because you'll know that that trail is, you know, is well maintained. You'll know all details about it and things like that. But by creating a, um, an account on all trails, which you have to have for the app to, to work on your phone. I don't believe you have to have it on the computer, but on the phone, definitely do. Um, it allows you to do all that. Um, looking for trails, importing files, exporting files, um, reading and leaving reviews, custom maps, um, using a navigator to keep track of your adventures. It does connect to a Garmin device. I do have a Garmin device that I use when I'm hiking, but I haven't figured out how to do that quite yet. I have been a member of All Trails for a long time, but I've only recently downloaded this smartphone app. Um, you can use a navigator to keep track of your adventures, and you can create custom maps and put those onto or view them from your all trails app as well um you can navigate you can see history you can do profile and you can also get on the community and contribute to um you know new content and try to edit old content so pretty cool now at the pro level 
what it does is it allow, it allows you to do some additional features. And right now, I believe I'll check that in just a second to see if that's still going on. They had a they had a special going on, and um, I don't know if it's still going on or not. So the pro part of all trails is nice because it will give you some additional map overlays. Um, you can download your your um, maps to your phone. It co it collaborates with your computer to app pretty pretty sm smoothly, and you get all that for I believe it's twenty nine dollars a month. Or sorry, not a month. Sorry, twenty nine dollars a year, and then that um, goes into. I think it's on a special deal, or it was the other day. I got it for half price. I think it's twenty nine dollars for a year, and um, now they are having a deal for half off. Okay, so it's pretty cool. You can do a lot of things with all trails. It's been around a long time, probably the longest of the three we're going to talk about, as far as I understand, and it's just very user friendly and very, very cool. So the other one that's out there is called Onyx Backcountry. I'm on a trial version of that right now. Um, Onyx is pretty cool in that it has more of a map-based. So it's almost like a hybridized version of Google Maps, kind of supercharged and, and set up for hiking. And right now they have a code you can do to get the premium version. I think you can do a seven-day trial. After that, I think you're required to pay in order to use it. But what they do is they give you $10 for the entire year. Normally, it's $29, I believe. And what it does is they donate the proceeds to leave no trace. So that's pretty cool. But what the app does and the, and the website itself is it gives you a more of a map type view. Um, 3D maps let you find hiking trails. It does not have any other uh, guides like All Trails does, and you can use offline maps, and they can they can be set up to look 3D. So it kind of goes beyond a topo map. So that's a pretty cool feature. I'm actually going to probably sign up for this $10 trial deal, or $10 sorry not trial. I'm on the trial right now. The $10 um, annual membership and see how that goes. But it looks pretty cool, like it's got a really uh, lots of features. But uh, that one is available um, onyxmaps.com slash backcountry slash app. So it's onxmaps.com forward slash backcountry forward slash app to check that one out. And the third one we're going to talk about in brief is called Guthook. And Guthook actually is more of a guide and a, and, a, and a very descriptive, detailed guide for some of your longer trails. They don't seem to have a lot of the local stuff, which is which is understandable because they're they're focused more on the long trails. For example, the Appalachian Trail. You can get a guide to the entire Appalachian Trail which is uh, 2,180 miles long, which you know starts in, starts in Georgia and ends in Maine. You get a full guide with resupply points, with um, you know trail conditions, all kinds of detailed stuff. Um, basically, it's like a guidebook that is digitized and put on your phone. And they have them for all kinds of places, like Acadia National Park. They have them for different states, different countries, like Australia, New Zealand. Lots of cool stuff. And as of right now, I don't see um, that they have any kind of deals for annual. I think you just kind of pay by the content. And once that content is downloaded, you have it for life. And I guess whenever they update it, you get it. Um, you know, going back to you. And their website, if you want to check them out, Atlas Guides. 
dot com forward slash trail dash guides. But you can also try Gut Hook into Google or whatever search engine you use and also look for it on the App Store or in Google Play. But three different apps that will help you with trails. They all work for different purposes and they all are great for their intended purposes. So check them out. So we've talked about, in brief, how to find trails. So use those resources, check those out, and uh, find yourself a trail near you to get out and hike on. But before you go out there, let's talk about some things you should bring with you. We're going to talk about the 10 essentials in brief, and that should help us be safe and prepared for things that could happen in the outdoors, especially on our hike. So the 10 essentials are divided into 10 categories or 10, if you want, if you will, systems. And we're just going to go through them one by one. The first of those systems is navigation. Navigation is very important. You need to know where you're going, uh, how to get there, the best way to get there, and of course, more importantly, how to get back. So navigation includes Maps, compasses, GPSs, those type of things. You need to know where you're going. And in my particular case, I usually carry a paper map and a compass usually with me um, when I'm out in the wilds. Because you never know when, you know, those. you might need to find out where, what you know, what's what you're looking at, where you're going, that kind of thing. Um, even on places that I'm familiar with, I usually try to carry a paper map just in case because the GPS in your phone or the GPS unit you might be using runs on batteries. It may run out of power. And it's good to have that uh, skill with a map and compass. Uh, the next thing, and very important coming up uh, here in Texas for the next several months, is sun protection. You need to have some kind of way to shade yourself from the sun to protect your your skin against the UV rays that are out there. So that includes uh, sunglasses for sure and a hat. I would always take those with me. And sunscreen, even in the winter, sunscreen. The sun is still out. The sun is still producing UV rays. So you want to make sure you can protect yourself or a long sleeve shirt. I do have a new shirt. I just got, um, I don't remember the name exactly. I think it's Bay leaf, bay leaf. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's a long sleeve sun protection shirt that I'm going to try out some this summer to uh, see what it see what it does. Because you want to minimize that exposure if you can, especially if you're going to be out there longer than you anticipated. Uh, the next one is going to be insulation, and insulation includes um, things when it's cold, such as you know a jacket, but it also includes things like that are more practical like a rain shell. I don't really need a jacket necessarily in the middle of summer in Texas. Probably not going to need that. But I might need a rain shell because you never know when an afternoon thunderstorm could break out. You leave the house, it's sunny, and you come back, and that's not the case. So you definitely want to um, pack that so you can be prepared for the weather change. So do it appropriately to the season. You know, if, if you're in the spring or fall or winter, you know, you leave on a sunny day, definitely, you know, take some extra layers just in case you're out there longer than you anticipate. Illumination. Back when I was a park ranger, I definitely had to go and get some people off some trails several times because they were out there and they didn't have their, they didn't think they'd be out there that long, so they didn't have their flashlight. They had no source of light. So they were stuck on the trail. But you can easily pick up a cheap flashlight um, anywhere just about <laughs> and um, you know the cheapest one you know at least is something you do have one probably on your smartphone if you have a smartphone but again the batteries may run out you may not have very much battery uh, so make sure and take a flashlight a headlamp a lantern something with some extra batteries first aid kit very important you don't have to pack something, uh, you know, that the ambulance, you know, the EMS crew would bring out. But, you know, something that's going to be utilized for common 
common things that might happen. I have a little kit that I carry. It's just a little travel size kit. I think I picked it up at the Dollar Tree. Matter of fact, I know I picked it up at the Dollar Tree. It's got 21 items in it. And on the back, it's got bandages, just regular size band-aids, the smaller band-aids, the round band-aids, <clears throat> excuse me, the knuckle band-aids, uh, a few gauze pads, and some alcohol preps. So I carry that with me. I carry a bandana that can be used for a tourniquet. It could be used for splinting. It could be used for a sling, a uh, type of sprained ankle. I also have some um, some rolled gauze. I think I maybe gave a buck for, the, for that at the Dollar Tree. Um, and a few other items. I don't really care a whole bunch of you know first aid stuff. But... You know, think about the common things you're going to get. Cuts, scrapes, bruises, that kind of things. Maybe a sprained ankle. Hopefully not, but maybe. Be prepared for those things. Fire. If you're going to be out there for longer than you anticipated, especially if the weather turns bad and you need to cook some food or you need to dry your wet clothing or you need to purify some water, fire is important. I usually take a lighter of some sort with me, usually a Bic lighter. They're nice and cheap. Um, in a plastic bag with some dryer lint. I know that sounds weird, but dryer lint is free and available. And a tube of chapstick. I can coat that chapstick around the dryer lint, and it gives me a waterproof um, fire starter that's really easy and able to, you know, be acquired, you know, pretty much every everywhere. Um, repair kit and tools. I usually carry a little bit of duct tape, just rolled up like about a, you know, about a, you know, half inch wide of duct tape, just kind of roll it up on itself. Um, a pocket knife, and sometimes, well, most of the time, I'll carry a um, multi-tool. The multi-tool has scissors on it. It has a screwdriver, different things, can openers, all kinds of stuff. And, of course, if you're going to bring on, be on any kind of special um, equipment that you need, you know, bring that with you as well. Um, food. Always need to bring food. You never know how, much, how long you're going to be out there. You need to have that energy to keep your body going. So, of course, consider your allergies and any kind of uh, issues you might have with food. But good examples would be stuff you don't have to cook, like trail mix, uh, nuts of different types, granola bars, um, things that, get, that, are, that are easy to pack, easy to prepare, or just pop out of the package and eat and give your body energy so you can keep going to whatever you need to do. Because you might be out there longer than you think. You might need a little fuel to run the on your body. Another one that's important for this time of year, especially here in Texas, is hydration. Hydration is um, very important. Your body activity is going to um, use water. You're going to sweat that water out, especially if it's very hot. So you need to be prepared to, t to have water that you normally would take, but also have water that you would um, be able to replenish because you're going to be using up more water than you normally would during a day if you're active outside, especially when it's hot. And before you feel thirsty, you need to be drinking water. So water bladder, water bottle. doesn't have to be fancy. It could be just a, a, a you know, bottled water from, from, the, from the convenience store that you stick in your pack. But make sure you have that water with you and even bring some extra as well. Additionally, you want to have the ability to collect other water. Do not drink wild water. So water that's out there looks like a nice clear stream. I don't advise drinking that. Bring some purification tablets. The ability to boil water. Or bring something like a live straw, a sawyer, a platypus, one of those different types of filter filtering systems you can use uh, readily that will either go right into your mouth or go into a... Uh, water collection device like a bottle or a bladder or something like that. Emergency shelters. You never know when you're going to be out there. A member of your party or yourself gets injured. You can't get out. The weather turns bad. You need something to protect yourself. So um, if you have one of those little lightweight tube tents, I'm not talking about a full-size tent, just like one of those plastic-like tents, a uh, space blanket, um, a tarp. A bivy sack, an emergency bivy, you know, something like that, just to be able to protect yourself in case the weather gets bad and you get stuck out there, and you have the you know the option to, uh, 
you know, set up and protect yourself from the elements while help arrives. Additionally, depending on your jurisdiction, you may want to pack a cloth face covering that varies from, from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Some places may require you to have that. And it's always a good idea to have hand sanitizer or some way to clean your hands because you may be away from sinks and running water and uh, not be able to clean your, your hands. That's kind of a, r- a rough and dirty um, covering of the 10 essentials. All right, so we talked about how to find trails. We talked about the 10 essentials you should carry. Let's talk about your footwear, and that includes socks. You're going to be on your feet when you're hiking, so you want to take care of those and have the best possible chance for those to help carry you into the trail and out of the trail. So if you've been spending any time on YouTube um, or articles on the web, you know, you probably have seen the debate of hiking boots versus trail runners. I have always been a hiking boot person. I've had several pairs of hiking boots. Um, and I've had several pairs of trail runners and I've used them both to, to hike. Um, a lot of them, you know, are good for different things. But if you want to just, you know, break it down, let's think about it like this. The hiking boot versus the trail runner. Um, Your hiking boot is going to be, is going to be a heavier duty. Whereas your trail runner is going to be more lightweight. So hiking boots offer, you know, that, that heavy duty durability, they provide ankle protection. They um, provide a little more warmth, you know, in cooler and in, in colder weather. And pretty much the traction is pretty much all all around, you know, good, no matter what. Where you know, whereas the trail runners are gonna, you know, they they don't require any breaking in. They're very breathable. They are perfect for you know fast paced long miles and they can be used for multiple things. Whereas, you know, hiking boots, pretty much they're hiking boots and, you know, they don't get as hot because they're not as, you know, they're not built the same as a hiking boot. And depending on, you know, what type you get, there's some that have a sticky sole or some that have, you know, more of a a lug sole, like a hiking boot. It just really depends. So those are kind of the overviews there. Um, So really, Think about it like this. The, the hiking boot is heavier. They're bulkier. They're going to require some time to break them break them in. And a lot of people just think automatically, I'm going to go hiking. I need a hiking boot. That's not always true. Um, your trail runners are going to wear out faster. And they're less supportive. But, as I said before, they do have some benefits. I'm not going to attempt to, to see which ones, um, you know, in this podcast, try to tell you which one is right for you. But I'm just going to tell you some just some tips. You definitely want to have a, pardon me, I had a little sip of water there. Um, you definitely want to have something that is, that is right for you. A hiking boot. Um, or a trail runner, depending on the situation, might be right for me. But it may not be right for you, either one. You know, you have to figure out which one. The best thing you can do is go to a go to a good place that has uh, some experts that can tell you what that is. If you're close to an REI or some type of you know similar store, um, they can definitely tell you you know what you might need and what's going to be the best. But you want something that's going to fit you good. Generally, if you're going to be using these for um, a long time, you're going to want them a little bit bigger than normal. Probably, generally, they say about a half size bigger, just because that gives your feet plenty of room in there um, so that your toes are not bumping against the end. Because you're putting a lot of miles in, you know, you're going to, you have the possibility of, you know, causing some issues with your toes 
and maybe even losing toenails. So you don't want to do that. Um, but the main thing is, you know, you want to make sure they fit, they fit well and they fit you for the use that you're going to do. Um, because you don't want to not take care of your feet. You don't want, you don't want blisters and things like that. Now, as far as, um, socks go, I have worn a lot of socks in my day uh, as a hiker. I, back in the eighties and nineties, I used to wear a, a rag wool sock with a polypropylene liner. So you, um, were able to do that. Um, and I never, never really got blisters, but those rag wool socks were hot. They were super hot. And, you know, having that little thin polypropylene layer in there, mm, not, not really so great. So just like I'm not going to attempt to tackle the, um, <laughs> you know, what shoe is perfect for you. You're gonna have to do some research on that yourself. And I'd be glad to point you to some articles. I'll try to put those in the show notes that uh, may be helpful. And um, same thing with socks. You know, not everybody is the same with socks, but definitely you want something that is uh, either a synthetic or some kind of a wool, one of these smart wool, um, darn tough. There's a lot of different ones out there that uh, can provide you. So I'll put so I'll just put some articles in the in the show notes that will help you with picking out your footwear, including your socks, because you definitely want that. Now, the other thing to think about is once you get all of your stuff together, your 10 essentials, your your food for the day or however long you're going to be out, your um, you know, all your stuff that you're going to carry, you know, you want to have a good backpack. And you know, a good backpack to some person, you know, might be a cheapie to somebody else. You know, you have to think about what is available to you. You know, are you able to, are you able to get on, um, you know, Amazon, REI, someplace, you know, Campmore, some of these places that have, you know, some, some higher quality gear, or you, do you have, you know, uh, an academy, um, uh, a Dick Sporting Goods, a, uh, Walmart, <laughs> you know, that has some, some stuff, but maybe not, you know, not the respected stuff, you know, but you're not necessarily doing that stuff for respect of others. You're doing stuff. What is affordable in your budget and what is going to work for you? I actually have an REI day pack that I use for day hiking. I don't have the model. It just has a trail on the outside. I've used it for many years. It has a water bladder package or pack package water bladder pocket um that allows me to put a water bladder in it it has side pockets it has an outside pocket it's perfect and with all my 10 essentials in there i'm weighing in um at a base weight for day hiking at about between 11 and 12 pounds usually so that's not too terribly bad it's not that heavy to carry it's not that big of a deal and that's including a i carry a small fanny pack on the front of my body for access to items that I need to get maybe a little more quickly, like first aid kit, my cell phone, um, GPS, you know, some snacks, stuff like that. But all that together, I'm looking at a right, right around 11 and a half to 12 pounds. Um, that's with snack food and water and everything too. So it's not quite really base weight, this base weight is supposed to be with with uh, with your uh, food and water not in there yet. But anyway, loaded up. I'm not running that heavy, but you definitely want to have that. As far as clothing goes, wear something that's comfortable and appropriate for the weather. Generally, you want to avoid cotton. Cotton is very absorbent. It uh, absorbs moisture. You want something that's going to wick. So something similar. It doesn't have to be Under Armour, but something similar. That's what I wore on the hike last week. Something similar to 
Um, an Under Armour type top. Shirt. There's a train going by, so if you hear that in the background, that's what's going on. Um, and then for uh, this time of year, I'm wearing shorts usually, and I'm wearing a, um, a nylon short. You can also check with a lot of places like um, online that you might be able to get some, some decent gear for cheap, such as, such as eBay, uh, Poshmark, Mercari, those type of places. Maybe it'll give you a good bargain for your buck. Hope that helps you. Hey guys, thanks for sticking with me for the end of the podcast here for this month. Um, rather than dive into some exercises, we're going to talk about uh, taking care of your feet for this last segment today. And as we mentioned earlier, you want to try to get a half a size larger than you normally would wear. For example, I recently got some trail runners from Salmon. Um, I don't remember the exact model. I don't have them in front of me, so. But they are uh, 12 and a halfs. I normally wear a 12, and I can already tell you they're a lot more comfortable to wear. Your feet are definitely going to, sw- to swell out there, especially if you're putting in some, some major miles. So you want to have th- that room for expansion so you don't cause your feet any undue damage or undue discomfort when you're out there hiking make sure that you have if you have opportunities to do so air your feet out on breaks soak your feet in cold water uh, if you get a moment and make sure you wear clean supportive socks as we mentioned before You want to avoid anything with cotton in it, even if it's a cotton blend with polyester or some other synthetic material. Um, Cotton is going to absorb moisture. Over the long run, it's just not going to be very comfortable. So I would avoid that at all costs. There's a lot of different ones out there that are available, a lot of different fabrics that are very comfortable to wear, both synthetic and, uh, and natural. You have a lot of different wools out there from companies like Smart Wool. Um, Some of the major manufacturers or major retailers out there like REI. You have Darn Tough, who puts out some good socks, and so on and so forth. So there's a bunch of different ones out there. We're not going to dive into that right now, but just make sure that you um, choose some good socks that work for you. And don't be afraid to mix it up and try new things. Make sure you always, when you go out, take a blister treatment kit. Because nothing's going to ruin your trip more than having a nice hot spot or, or even a, you know, if it develops into a full blister. Um, that's going to that's gonna not be good. It's not going to be very comfortable to walk on and to get back from your trip. So make sure you take that with, with you. The one that I take... Is uh, from KT Tape. It's called KT Performance Plus. It's a blister treatment patch. It's basically like a big, thick Band-Aid that forms a waterproof seal. And it says on the package, it says, Up to two, two times faster healing than traditional bandages. It lasts up to seven days and forms a 100% waterproof seal. And the one I have is very, very lightweight. It has six little patches in there that are slightly over an inch long, or inch wide, excuse me, by... Uh, two inches long so that should be big enough to cover most of your blisters that you might pick up and uh, performs that good seal on there when you get home you know don't be afraid to soak your feet in some Epsom salt if they're hurting when you get out and do those you know first several mile hikes you know your, your feet might be and your legs might be hurting pretty bad so don't be afraid to to treat yourself and as you as you do more and more hiking, you will get better and more comfortable at uh, getting out there and and uh, not being as sore, not being as, as broken down when you come back. But I definitely do appreciate you listening to me. Um, I'm going to have some resources in the show notes, which is coming right up in just a second. Thanks. 
Hey, y'all. Thanks for sticking with me to the end here. I think we've had a great episode today, episode two of the Natural Medic Adventures. We covered a lot of ground. Hopefully it was useful for you and you gained something new out of it. Because you've stuck with me this long, I'm going to I'm gonna, uh, give you a little deal on my Etsy store, Roadrunner Rarities. I'm going to have additional downloadable tip, tips and trick sheets available on the store. If you enter the code at checkout, 50 off, you will be able to save half half the price of those lists and tips and trick sheets that will give you a great deal. That's because I appreciate you spending your time with me, so I'm going to give you something back as well. I am the editor, host, um, guest... Uh, of this podcast, so it takes me a little while to get it going. I apologize for not being out sooner, but I'll do better in the future, and I'll get these other things produced and out on the store as well for you to have as resources to learn more about how you can have your own adventures in the outdoors. Definitely appreciate your time again. Have a great one. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.